seconds. Okay, everybody, so let's rub our palms together and bring our hands to the center of the chest. Close the eyes down. Inhale deeply and let's tune in with three ohms. Mm. So, I would love to introduce our very esteemed guest, Sianna Sherman. And um, Sianna has been a long, long time yogini. And she has been uh, <clears throat> very dedicated on this bhakti yoga path. And literally, I feel like she's just an encyclopedia for um, all things yoga, really but particularly her love for bhakti yoga. And um, I would say even maybe even more the path of, path of Tantra and um, particularly even with the Davies. So um, I couldn't think of someone better than, than you to come talk about one of these goddesses or multiple, we'll just see how it all weaves together. Um, but um, yeah, I'll just kind of pass it on and there's anything you want to share about yourself and your uh, journey, feel free to, and then feel free to just dive right on in. Thank you, Ananda Das. Hi, everyone. So I want to say uh, right back to Ananda Das that I love you so much. And this is one of my most favorite beings on the planet is Ananda Das. And we have been weaving and finding each other now, I, I for sure, 15 something years. And I'm so inspired by you and the whole dedication of your being, the devotion, the dedication, the beauty, the deepest bow to you. Thank you for inviting me into this moment, into your community. Really mm -hmm. excited to be here with all of you. Mm -hmm. So, I am Siana and I began the practice of yoga coming to it around 1988, 89. And then in 1993, I made my first journey to India. Now, coming from a Judeo Christian background that I um, bowed out of at the age of 13, but still in my psyche, when I got to India in 1993, it was confusing to me, to say the least. And uh, especially with the multiple pantheon of deities. And so I'll tell you a, a, a couple just fun little intro stories. So I landed in India in 1993 and I found myself quickly, like within the second or third day of being in a Murti Walla's uh, store on the side of the street. And I walked in and there was just thousands and thousands of uh, deities. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. And he could see that I was like stumbling a little bit. And so he said to me, close your eyes, ask your heart and feel inside of you who who is resonant for you who's calling you so i did that and i opened my eyes and i chose this one form and it was the form of nataraja and he 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 lifted it to me and he says this is the lord of the dance and i thought whoa that's it you know because i was not a trained dancer but the way that i moved through my own emotions in life was by dancing as a teenager. I just put the music up, go out into my parents' garage and just like rock it out and, and move through like all my emotions. Like instead of repressing them or just letting them take out control of me, I channeled my emotions through the power of dance. And so I understood that. Then I continued to stay in India for a year 
shortly after I entered a series of dreams where I kept getting hit on the head in my dreams in India with a peacock feather by this uh, Indian person. And I had no idea what was going on. And I kept getting bonked on the head. And I'd wake up in the dream and this peacock feather would wake me up and all these things were happening. Short, I'll shorten the story a lot and just say that within a couple months, I found myself at the gateway of an incredible ashram known as Ganesh Puri. And this was the home of the Siddha Yoga lineage. And when I got there, I fell into a massive fever for three days and three nights and I was hallucinating and not really sure at all what was happening and I just heard all this commotion and that third day um, the guru of the ashram arrived and her name is Gurumai Chitvala Sananda. I was taken immediately to Gurumai uh, within that first week of being there and she sent me out into a sanctuary forest space. And she said, go sit with the divine being of that garden. I was sent and I was like in my feverish state and I sat at this garden. There was this goddess riding on a great big lion in life-size form. I had no idea who anything, anybody was. And a lightning bolt shot out of this form into me and I just completely uh, went into uh, an ecstatic, terrifying, extremely joyful, terrifying, utter everything all at once. And that goddess was Durga. And so I, Durga. I was, <laughs> yeah, Jayma Durga. So I was initiated um, really through these empowerments of the yoga tradition I went on to be an initiate of Tantra, first through Kashmir Shaivism and then through Sri Vidya. And I really consider myself a, a deeply devoted Tantrika and a yogini as um, I might often like feel it inside myself as a yogini on fire because that's how it kind of initiated me is through the traditions as just feeling like I was lit aflame and on fire and everything initiating, everything transforming, everything blazing and being called into the most powerful path to fortify myself and train myself through sadhana to hold these energies and then ultimately to be a blazing flame of love and action here to serve on the planet. And so that's what this practice is about for me. And that's just a little intro story. And I've been dedicated ever since. And I love the power of story. And I love the power of the psyche. And I love the power of deep sadhana. And I love the power of our collective energy and of our sadhana and our sankopa. So um, I would love it if you all would that are here live and saying hello to everyone watching the recording at another time. If you could just put in the chat box there to ignite the circle together and bear witness as community together, a, a sankalpa, an intention that you have in your life right now, that the practices and the studies and the teachings of yoga really support you. And so if we could just all write in our intentions at this given moment, our sankalpa, our deepest rooted intention and our highest aspirations. I'd love to see that collectively. And thank you so much for being here. I'll put my glasses on so I can actually see what you write as well. <laughs> That's the important thing. Got it. Okay. So just write in your intentions. Here we, here's one. Um, an intention massively important in my movement yoga and dance practices is devotion and majesty. They are key in my gene keys as well, life path and evolution. Thank you for that. I just got the gene keys book, but I didn't open it yet. So I guess that's my, my affirmation. Mm -hmm. Keep writing everything in everyone. I made just a, a couple slides uh, for you. And I'm just gonna, Ananda Das, if you could give me a co-host capacity. I just didn't go heavy duty on the slides, just a couple as visual because it helps us. 
and then I'll free form it and I'll even open it up to questions and interaction together. So if a few more friends keep writing on your intentions, here's another one. I am embracing my capacity to sing and move to support myself and others. Thank you. Here's another becoming rooted in the divine and living with peace, love and presence for service and healing. Thank you. It's another devotion to voice and music. Thank you. Yes, keep writing those in. I love it. Just that we're all really here together in the power of transformation and service and offering our gifts and our soul beauty. Okay, I know more are coming. So I have the the um, capacity to share now. Okay, let me find that. Okay, so here we go. Open that up. All right, Goddess Durga, Maha Devi, and Maha Shakti. Can you all see this? You can see it, Ananda. Yeah, I think I see your mouth moving. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Some. Uh, she had the primary colors that you'll often see with Durga. It's not limited to this, but you see a lot of red and gold. So there I am in the red and gold, and here I am in red and gold. <laughs> and I thought um, this is an illustration that one of our uh, teachers in our community made for me with Durga and I just love it. I uh, really asked for the the form to be made with a lot of beauty and a lot of power and that scintillating kind of gold and effervescent Shakti energy. Shakti means power and Shakti means dynamic energy and Shakti means the creative dynamic power and energy that that burst forth out of the ground of our being. So you could say that Shiva is the principle of consciousness and the ground of being and Shakti is the principle of the energy that burst forth out of the ground of being. And so you feel this this energy, this surging energy. You can see in the right hand, and let's just take that for a moment. Lift your right hand up and bring the elemental powers together. The thumb is fire, the index finger is air, the middle finger is space, the ring finger is earth, and the little finger is water. Bring all those together and bring that alchemical power of the five elements together. And if you like, bring your left hand over your heart space, like Ananda had us bringing our hands to our heart to invoke. Just hold this for a moment because it means abaya mudra, it means fearless. And for a tantrika, this, this, means not necess this means that we're willing to summon forth our bravery and our courage to face our fears, to transform the fear into love, and also to know that we want to we want to face our fears, embrace our fears, work with our fears so that we can become more that we are meant to be through our bravery of being. So if we just hold this for a moment, let's chant three times, Om Dum Durgaye Namaha. And then I have a slide of just a couple mantras that we can invoke together. Om Dum Durgaye Namaha. Om Dum Durgaye Namaha. Om Dum Durgaye Namaha. Okay, now feel this, and that this mantra itself is um, invoking the the strength, the courage, and the protection to face our difficulties and to trans form and body, mind, heart, and the whole of our being. And let the let yourself kind of just widen your gaze and, and soften and, and feel what you feel, see what you see through this image and what's speaking to you. Because the power of imagery and story 
and many of the codes of the of the deities through the mythos is really the language of the soul and it will speak to you in different ways at different times in your life so see in this image what calls to you right away and then go ahead and just write that into the chat box as well like what a wit right away what do you feel what do you see what is just intriguing or curious to you and put that in so that we have a we just keep tending the community together and i'll be curious what what you are drawn to now this next one is um, from another artist in our community. And this is a weapon decoder, just to give us a little entry point. So we have the tiger, sometimes also seen as the lion, which is the primal power. And I'll go up and around the water pot, the water pot which is gifted to Durga by the, the god Brahma of the water pot of the Kumbha and also She's gifted the garland of chanting beads as well. And sometimes the water pot has flowing water in it. Sometimes it's filled with seeds that then are the power of mantra and sound vibration. She often has a lotus, which uh, symbolizes purified awareness and the spiritual truth of our being, as well as the power of our own rebirth. There is this discus. The lotus is often given to her by the power of the oceans as well. There's this discus that she's spinning on her index finger of the air element. It's gifted to her by the god of Vishnu, that which is the sustaining power. She has the sword of the clear mind of discernment of the highest form of intellect known as the buddhi. So the buddhi, there's the, there's the, Ahamkara, which means the egoic mind. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just we don't want to be controlled by it, it because Ahamkara means that which is the eye maker. So it's how we identify aspects of who we are. And then there's the manas level of the mind, which is our emotional and mental state. And then there's what's called the bhuti, which is the highest intellect of the mind. And it's represented by the power of the sword. She has a smile, a little hint of a smile, which you'll hear when I tell the story. And it's her composure that she's the eye in the middle of the storm. She has this bow and arrow, which is gifted to her by the god Vayu of the fastest of the winds. She's the power to aim our arrow and to also hit the mark. So to hold our intention, our sankalpa, aim our arrow true and hit the mark. She has the power of the trident or the trishula, this stands for, there's a lot of meanings here, but I'll just give you one tantric code. It stands for the three Shakti pillars, which are Itcha, Jnana, and Kriya Shakti. Itcha Shakti means the deepest innermost impulse of our being. The innermost impulse, the deepest heart fire desire is how I translate that. Then it has Jnana Shakti, which is the power of our intellect to have divine wisdom and divine knowledge. And then the third one is Kriya Shakti, which is the power of our action as skill in action. So this trident represents and holds the three Shakti pillars of Itcha, Jnana, Kriya Shakti of the heart fire, innermost desire, of the path of divine wisdom and knowledge and of that power that has our full integrity of skill and action. She has the conch, which often represents the power of dharma and our right relationship and integrity with the whole of our being and in relationship with others and our divine life purpose. Um, when the conch is blown, on the battlefield, so to speak, in the battlefield of the self too. It is a call to our dharma. It's like, what, what are you really doing here? Let's get to it. Let's stop distracting ourselves. Let's stop numbing ourselves out. Let's stop this and let's get on point and on task. And dra, dharma, dra means that which uplifts, that which upholds, that which is the power that sustains 
and upholds and uplifts the greater connectivity of all of us. So if we're wasting our life force energy, distracting ourselves, numbing ourselves out, we're not really on task and we don't really bring our gifts to the world. Everything I'm speaking about right now is coming to you from a tantric, a deep tantric wellspring because Tantra wants powerful people on this earth to use their power for the good of the greater whole. That is the whole premise at the base. It also initiates with what's called radical affirmation, saying we are here to radically affirm every part of our being. And in that, we are gonna reclaim the hidden parts of our own self, find that power and bring it to the world so that we can make this world a better place. So this conch and the power of Dharma announces all of this. Not only does it announce it, it summons us. And so she holds this conch. And then of course there is the thunderbolt, um, which I love. The thunderbolt represents diksha. It represents initiation. It's like if we're struck by a thunderbolt, I actually know five people now that are, that are still alive and have all been struck by thunderbolts. And it's amazing to every single one of their stories. But when you're struck by a thunderbolt, you can never be the same. Like that's, you radically change. So the thunderbolt is the power of diksha and initiation and says, um, here we go. We cannot go back and be that same sleepy, dull, uh, lethargic self. We are going for it and we're gonna do it together. So that's the end of that little moment. Let's go to the next. Here is Durga, the great mother. Um, one of the ways I like to uh, speak about her is she who is the fortress and the flame. She who is wielding the shield and the sword. Jess, do you have a question? Did you mean, did you want to ask a question now or? I put it in the I chat. I was just wondering if you meant lightning as the same as thunderbolt or? Well, okay. So then there's, there's a connection here. So the thunderbolt is called the Vadra. And the, it's like the sun and the sun's ray, okay? That they're all going together. The, the ocean and the wave, the sound and the light. So the thunderbolt announces, you know, through the sound and then the force of the lightning is what impels and um, the change and propels you forward. Does that help? Okay, maybe that's a yes. Yeah, sorry, I was nodding saying yes. Oh, helps. okay, okay, I can't see, so I'm seeing my screen, so okay. Oh, sure. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So here's just a couple names, and when I tell the story, you can kind of take these codes in. I'm Ambika, mother, Bhadra Kali, the fierce form of Kali, Bhavani, the abode of the universe, Jagadamba, mother of the universe, Jaya, victorious power, Maha Devi, great goddess, Maha Kali, great dark fierce goddess, Maha Lakshmi, great abundant goddess, Maha Saraswati, great flow goddess, Maha Maya, the great illusion, she who produces the cycle. Mahisha Surta Mardini, she who's the slayer of the buffalo demon, Mahisha, I'll tell you that story and add a few layers. Nishumba Shumba Hanani, so these are the twin demon brothers, and maybe I'll slide that story in too. They're known as Shumba, Nishumba and Shumba. Radra Muki, she who has a fierce face like the destroyer Rudra, who is the howling form of Shiva, goes raging and howling through the universe when there is injustice and takes the most fierce form. Vajra Yogini, the goddess of great power. There's that word Vajra again, which doubles up has meaning diamond and also thunderbolt. So Vajra means both because a diamond has to be uh, in the earth under high intensity, high heat, high pressure. It gets cooked and pressurized over a long period of time to shine. And so it's known for the tantrika that we cultivate the diamond body and the diamond mind that the pressurizing and the cooking of life of our soul's quest is actually, if we do our sadhana, shines us, you know, bright like a diamond. That's our theme song there. And the Vajra is the thunderbolt. And then Yoga Maya, the one who lifts the veil of illusion. Okay. 
So just a couple mantras and we could sing. So one of the great Shakta Tantra texts of all time is 700 verses, 700 shlokas from that, that narrate um, all the stories of the Shakta Tantra goddesses with the central theme of Maha Shakti, Maha Devi, and the power of Durga. So I thought we could chant just a couple of those verses. And then um, I'll show you this. Doom, just gonna minimize this. Here we go. Okay, doom is a sound seed vibration. Like we have all the, I know you're doing all these great activations and studies and voice and understanding and practices with Ananda Das. So, and just to layer into that doom is the seed bija of Durga. And Durga means that which is the power of the fortress. So this activates and opens within us the capacity of strength, courage, and protection, and protection for our minds, our families, our children. Om Dum Durga Ye Namaha Durga Ye to that great Shakti force that is Durga. Om and salutations to this feminine power and energy which protects us from all manners of negative influences and for which doom is the seed. I also let you all know that um, my primary heart teacher is Sri Devi Bringi, and so I wanna really honor her. And I've, I've learned so much from her all the time. So just really honoring all of our teachers and spiritual lineages. I also spent a great amount of time since my mid twenties with um, Sally Kempton, who when I first met her was Swami Durgananda. And this translation, of ohm and salutations to the feminine energy, which protects us from all manners of negative influences and for which doom is the seed is from Sally Kempton, who is now in the ancestral realms and, and um, just an amazing beacon on this planet that paved the way for so many of us. And now uh, praises for the Maha Shakti. So Ya Devi, I'm gonna chant it uh, just uh, once and then we can do it together. So this is calling on reverence and salutations to that goddess abiding within all beings as the form of energy. That's the Shakti Rupena. She takes the form of all energy. And then reverence, reverence, reverence to that goddess abiding in all forms, Rupena, of all beings as Chaitana, as the form of consciousness itself. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu. Shakti Rupena Samstita Namastasye 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 Namo Namaha Yadevi Sarva Puteshu Chetana Rupena Samstita Namastasye 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 Namo Namaha. Deepest bow. Om Dum Dragaye Namaha. Thank you, thank you. Okay, just a couple more slides just to support us as I then tell the story. We're a version of a story right now. Dorga is love, truth, focus, vigor, dignity, stability patience, integrity, dedication, perseverance, regal beauty, primal instinct, one pointedness, fierce compassion, the strength to face our fears, grace under pressure, she who blazes and shines, the power of our inner strength that protects us, she who protects the world, the courage in the midst of fear, the power of the collective whole, the eye in the middle of the storm, calmness in the midst of chaos, freedom from being controlled by our fear. She who has the hint of a smile, the remembrance to be the fortress in one's own self, that power that represents true justice in the world and righteousness for humanity, the power of love that always defeats the love of power, the bravery to come out of hiding with our voices, our gifts and our power, a feminine embrace of community and leadership that protects humanity, 
the obliterates uh, scattered energy, fragmented thoughts and addictive behaviors, the fortification of our boundaries emotionally, physically, mentally and spiritually. These are some of the empowerments. Just the last couple slides, so you have, and you can have all these, of course. Durga is the great mother goddess who gives birth to all creation, sustaining power in the dissolution of all the worlds and all beings. She's everything born from the gifts of the gods, goddesses combined, and she gives birth to them in the original form. Thousands of arms wielding the weapons necessary to defeat any type of demonic force, riding upon a great tiger or lion, the most radiant as the most brilliant sun. Her colors are often red, orange, yellow, and gold. Dorga is the pure blazing fire in the center of our being and the flaming one and the blazing one. As the invincible strength of love itself, she is the power of love that defeats the love of power shows us the way of our inner stability, our perseverance, and the ability to see more than meets the eye. She calls us forth to rise up in our power and our truth and to be impeccable in our service to humanity. The power of our voice to be an agent for change, standing resolute and unwavering for justice, her determination matched by grace, ferocity of being, compassion, awakening the fierce love in the center of our being, the all transforming heart fire. For the teacher of yoga, Durga strengthens our tenacity, clarifies our vision, creates clear boundaries, keeps us accountable, insists that we track our shadow like a cat in the night, and aims her arrow of sankalpa straight to the center of our heart. This is the power of our bravery to be authentic and free, to blow the conch, to hear the call of the conch, and to summon us forth. And she says, now is the time to unleash your courage and serve the recalibration of a new humanity. The dawn of awakening is here. I had one more slide that has disappeared, but maybe I will find it. And um, I tell the story now, just one form, but really asking, how is she calling you into the three Shakti pillars of your being, of Icha, Jnana, Kriya, your deepest heart fire desire, your, your way of knowing, understanding, and divine knowledge, and also into your most skillful action, your integrity is skill in action. How is Durga calling you to aim your arrow and align with your most divine design? So take that. And then if you want to reach out to me, here you can find me, Instagram, my website, and this means with love. So there's one more slide that I had for you, but um, I'll just tell you a little bit about what that is, and then we'll go into this story time. So I yeah. shared the... Uh, can you they're, hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you great. They're, they're all Durga by nature. They're already exploring their voices and, and leading Kirtan. So that is that is the inspiration. Wow. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I want to hear everyone sing then. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I love it. So excited for you all. And you're with the greatest of the greats, um, this beautiful teacher. So here we go. At the etymology of Durga, I have a whole slide and I'll just put it in and I'm not going to go too much into it, but just know that it, Durga's name it's her, itself means the fortress because it means the tough going. And what the invitation here is, is that when the going gets tough, the one you call on is the tough going because she's not going to give up. And it's really about summoning this power and this force inside of us. Again, it is to call forth our courage, our bravery, our virya, rasa, our deepest courageous uh, embodiment and to, to use it wisely. So here we go, a little story time and maybe let's just take a couple breaths together. I, I love um, breath and mudra and all the things. So if you'd like to stretch your body out Go for it. I'm just gonna take a nice, I like to shimmy too, so little Shakti shimmies. And anchor into the roots and reach it up and give that shimmy power. And let's take a few alchemical heart wing pulses. Let your breath flow. 
little hint of a smile always works out too. And perhaps a cross reach from side to side. You might be sitting down. You might like to just get your legs involved a little bit and taking this goddess form, this goddess stance. Okay, now whether you're sitting down or standing up, we're gonna take 10 Dasha Maha Vidya forms, the 10 Fierce Wisdom Goddesses, reach up with an inhale and exhale down. And here we go. Three, two, and one. Keep it grounded. Inhale, reach it up. Index finger together. Left thumb over right. Hold your breath in and summon forth that sankalpa, your intention, with your voices, your kirtan, your activations. Really hold it, see it, blaze it. Know that you are a flame of love and action. And then exhale, release. Okay, now lean to one side and just give it a little swirl and open up these myofascial meridians. And then we're just gonna do one more fun thing. This is a little dragon dance. Try this and then reverse it. Okay, now like a little contact dance and reverse it and open up these heart wings and now cross it over. This is a mudra that represents a shield. So it's called a shield mudra. Durga is that power of protection, clear boundaries, bravery, inner strength, and the power of the shield. And then bring the back of the hands together, wrap the index, hold it, wrap the middle, hold it, skip your ring finger, and then go to your little finger and wrap. Then bring your thumb and your ring finger together to create a seal. And you can bring the base of the thumb right to the sternum, to the root of your heart. This is Abhaya Hridaya Mudra, Fearless Heart Mudra. So let's take this and Breathe into it. And if this is uh, too complicated right now, come back to this first one with one hand to the heart and the other hand in Abhaya. Hear that same Sanskrit. The ability to shine the light of consciousness and awareness even into our greatest fears and to become more skillful in our action and in our responses to the intensities of life versus reacting to the triggers. And then let's take this heart fire desire and hold your seed intention in your hands and just blow a blessing breath into this and then give yourself a blessing. We really bless this moment together and let yourself be cozy. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, and well, maybe not so long ago, because this story, like so many of the stories, is happening right here, right now, inside of each one of us. It is our hero's journey, our heroine's quest. It is that soul quest of our being that the mythos invites us into. You might remember that you're every character in the story, the ones that you fall in love with and maybe the ones that you don't like so much. And listen inside the story for how it's calling you, how it's summoning you, how it's speaking to you, how it's revealing to you, how it's pulling things forth from within you. And here we go. So there was this um, great intense practitioner of yoga on the planet. And this practitioner of yoga was determined to be almighty and all powerful, practicing the most austere, intense and fierce kind of practices until he would gain the favor of the gods themselves. This fierce practitioner is known as Mahisha and often took the form of a bull, of a very powerful, stubborn, intense, and strong and mighty bull form known as Mahisha. And Mahisha kept practicing, practicing until the gods took notice. Finally, finally, one of the gods took notice and it was Brahma, the, the creator god of everything and brahma said okay mahisha i see you i hear you it's been thousands of years you've been doing these practices what is it that you want let's give you a boon and mahisha says there's only one thing that i want 
And that one thing is to be almighty, all powerful, to be invincible and to be in fact, immortal. I don't want anyone, any being, or any condition to ever be able to slay me or kill me. So Brahma says, okay, well, you know, I can give you a, the, the boon of great invincibility and all of this, but by the very laws of life and death and of nature and of the universe, there must be one way, just one, that could be the cause of your demise. So Mahisha, you get to choose it. That is my boon to you. Mahisha immediately says, oh, that's so easy. Let it be at the hands of a woman because what woman could ever slay me? Now we all know that that was a big mistake. So we're, we're well aware of that right from the beginning. And you can take this as codes within your being so that we're not stuck in a gender binary, but we're just thinking of like what the expressions are. So what's the feminine empowerment code, you know, that's being called forth here. So Mahisha says, let it be, you know, at the hands of a woman, what woman could ever slay me, Brahma says, and so be it. There it is. So now Mahisha goes about the three realms, kicking up the dust, polluting the world, taking over everything, totally corrupt and filled with greed and uh, political prowess and destroying everything. And the whole of the world goes dismal and awful and the sun loses its brilliance and the grass no longer grows green. The moon has no shine at all. The poets have no inspiration. Even lovers don't wanna make love anymore. Everything is dull and dismal and just completely depressing. The, the great divine beings, they come together. They say, what are we gonna do? And we have tried, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva have all gone to Mahisha and have tried to defeat him, but it's impossible. Nothing can defeat Mahisha. And so as the gods are there, like trying to figure out what to do, they remember that there was a boon. They begin to call to the great form of the Maha Shakti. And is it possible that she might come and take this form? And so they, one story says they all come into a great circle. You can see us all in a great circle, right? Like a community, a collective power. They come into a great circle and they summon forth their kundalini shakti they raise the power within them they concentrate it at their radiant brow at the at the agnya chakra gateway the control center the command center right that's what it means they purify it raise it concentrate it and then they beam it like a laser all simultaneously at the exact same time into the center of the circle and as they do that, this most lustrous, shining, maha, great, but also in the tantric world has a second meaning, wrathful, the fiercest form you've ever seen, great and mighty, fierce and wrathful. This lustrous form, maha, Devi, the power that shines, begins to emerge. And out of the, the light and the power, of Lord Brahma, of the creation, come her feet. Out of the brilliance of the sun, come her toes. Out of the flow of the water, comes the shape of her legs. Out of the earth itself, her hips are formed. Out of the thunderbolt from Vajra, her waist. From Chandra, the moon, her breast. From Vishnu, the power that sustains all her arms, all thousand and eight arms from the children of the Ganga and the power of creativity come her fingers, her lips come from Prajapati, the, the, the god of all um, creatures and beings, her nose from Kubera, the lord of wealth, her eyes, all three eyes come from Agni, the power of the fire, her ears come from the Lord and the energy of the wind, the, the shining light of her face and the glow of her being from Shiva himself. And then 
Her hair is said to come as a gift from the Lord of Death of Yama. And so she rises up and she's lustrous and everyone is fully taken by this extremely powerfully radiant form and being. Then they immediately all begin to give gifts to this great Shakti force. And so Shiva gives the trident. He gives an exact, uh, out of his trident comes forth another trident. Brahma gives forth the chanting mala beads as well as the water pot. Vishnu gives the whirling discus and the power of sustaining and sustenance and nourishment. Vayu, the air, gives the power of the bow and arrow. Agni gives a fast and sharp spear. The Mount Himavat gifts this goddess with a great lion mount or often seen as a tiger. And on and on, the ocean gives her garlands of never fading always fragrant flowers and lots of jewels that come up out of the ocean. So the Lord of thunder and lightning, Indra gives her the thunderbolt. So it goes on and on like this and she receives all these amazing gifts. She rises up on this great Mount lion and or tiger, that primal power that just knows that instinctual power of our being that's right on task and never misses a beat. She comes upon this great Vahana, this great vehicle of this primal power. And she's laughing and glowing and she's moving through the realms. And then it says, here's a little detour of the story. One story says, then she goes into her own personal retreat. She says, I'm gonna take a little solitude for myself. And she places on the outside of her personal sanctuary, four attendants, one for the east, one for the west, one for the north and one for the south. And they're watching, they're the guardians of the directions. And she's in her own inner composed solitude, her sanctuary, her full uh, composure, her full regal majesty. She is the blazing flame of our own center. And the world by her very mere presence starts to glow again. The grass that was no longer green begins to grow green. The birds start singing their mating songs. The moon is filled with splendor and lovers start making love and poets start streaming their inspired uh, bardic storytelling and poetry and mu musical geniuses bring their kirtans through into the world and all these things start to happen and as the world starts to become beautiful again through all three realms mahisha begins to hear about it and he says who dares to make my world beautiful again who dares to bring beauty who dares to bring song and brilliance and empowerment who dares to call the power of love into this world i deem it that it is banned forever and i'm the one in control he sends his sergeants and his generals to find out what's going on the four attendants are holding the directions as the armies come more near the generals come more near and they say, we demand to see who is making this world beautiful. And Durga comes out and she's shining. She's luminous. She's like, it's unbearable, this kind of power and beauty. And the generals just immediately bow down to her and they, they, they get it and they go, oh, uh, okay, we'll be back. We'll go tell Mahisha, but they are, they're floundering. They can't even speak. They can't even remember why they came there. They go back to Mahisha and they say, she's so beautiful. The power of this radiance is unbearable. We're in total awe, we're in rapture. And Mahisha says, go back and drag that Devi by her hair and bring her to me and she will be my wife. Okay, well, you can imagine what's about to happen. So they go back and they like, okay, we we're so sorry, but we have to drag you by her hair. And she says, oh, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, but like a long time ago, I made this vow. I was just, you know, I was just like a silly young girl, but I made this vow that I could never marry anyone who wasn't able to defeat me in battle. 
and that they're like, oh, okay. She says, I'll just go willingly with you and I'll just go let, I'll just go let this Lord of yours, I'll just let him know, you know, that I appreciate the invitation and, and then we can go into a battle. So she goes and she meets Mahisha and she says, surely Mahisha, you, you must know by now that you are like a moth that's rushing fast into the flame of your demise and I am that flame and the one who will cause your demise and she's doing all of this by the way smiling and in some of the storytelling it's even said that she's kind of just looking down at her fingernails and kind of giving herself a a bit of a manicure she's completely unbothered you know by this being and he gets furious he's so outraged and he begins to shape shift it's like when our when our, our most intense emotions just begin to like fly off the handle and they shape shift into every possible uh, form. Mahisha shape shifts from the great bull into this big tiger, into this um, generalissimo, into this wild elephant. It keeps shape shifting all these forms. And she just meets each, each of the shape shifting forms with another one of her weapons, because all those weapons are her resources, and she takes care of that form, and he shape shifts into another. And this battle goes on for a while until, until Dorga kind of gets bored by it all. She says, Okay, Mahisha, the time has come, and en enough is enough. And in this moment, in the great Devi Mahatmya said that she rises up, she lifts up, exalted into the air high into the sky and there she takes a sip of the divine ambrosia the divine nectar this is like all the nectar of the practices and the remembrances of who we truly are the real power that we are the power of love that always is going to defeat the love of power she drinks from the divine nectar the divine ambrosia and it fills her and then she descends back down onto the ground and with the soft underside of her foot, as Mahisha is shape shifting from one form into the other, and he's got again the head of the bull, she puts the soft underside of her foot right over his own throat. And she just stands there and she pins him down to the ground. And she's waiting for him to like wake up. It's it's the moment that she's calling him to wake up. And she holds him there in between the shape shifting forms. And it's also interesting that it's the throat, which is the, the bridge between the mind and the heart. Because what she really is calling all of us into is that full connection of our minds and our hearts and then into our embodied gift that we are. So she holds him at the throat. And then finally, Mahisha Sorda, so Ah Sorda, so sort of means like um, the goodness, so to speak, and ah sort of means that which is against the goodness. It's not benevolent, it's evil, it's demonic. So it's Mahisha, ah sort of. And she uh, holds it there until he looks and his eyes all of a sudden widen and they deepen and consciousness expands. And he looks up and he sees Durga for who she truly is the great mother victorious triumphant maha devi and he cries out jay ma jai ma and he knows and he awakens and it's at that point that she chops off his head so now as that happens all of the leagues of the armies that have come into this great battle with mahisha it said that in an instant all of their weapons turn into shining jewels and that which was used as a weapon of destruction has now transformed into a jewel of great beauty and so this story of Durga calls us into the transformation of anything that is being used inside of us or in our lives as a weapon of destruction as a way of self-sabotage as a way of not really knowing who we are that it must be transformed and she insists that it will be into the true multifaceted bejeweled being that we are here to bring our gifts to the world here to serve each other here for collective care 
here to take care of each other with the authentic genius and creative energy that we are. So this is one of the most famous of the stories of Mahadevi Mahashakti, known as Durga. She who wields the, the sword and the shield, she who is the fortress and the flame, and she who is that blazing song through the core of our being, radiant and pure and ready to shine and to make this world a better place. So I want to say thank you to all of you for bringing your voices, for being an agent of change, for being an agent of liberation and abundance and beauty and sound vibration. And through your kirtans and through your artistry and through the deep devotion of your hearts that, that every song you sing and share, that it awakens awakens the heart of humanity and that we are called through the power of you to deepen in our shared humanity, to evolve ourselves and to truly and sincerely be that power of love and grace and compassion, sometimes fierce, sometimes gentle, sometimes all of it at once and bring this world into the power of the truth and the beauty and the love that it really is and can be and that we restore it together.